He gave away $350 million. $350,000 is the median family income. Even the trash looks cleaner. Probably some of the wealthier moms in the country. This is a very nice area. <laughs> Was this Andrew Carnegie's home? Yes. I don't know what's gonna happen to New York now. It's a mess. And what has happened in that building over the years? Once this goes away in America, America loses a lot of what's great about it. For the business owners, it's gotta be brutal. I like that shot right there. I guess much more than five million. This is where Anthony Bourdain lived. Mini Dog Park. God protected the Jewish people with clowns. Just way ahead of his time. Good afternoon, guys, here in New York City. One of the most expensive places on the planet with some of the wealthiest people. So today we're gonna go up into one of these neighborhoods, up into the richest neighborhood in New York City. Central Park, Fifth Ave, and Upper East Side. That's the neighborhood. So that runs basically uh, 59th to 96. So the Upper East Side is known for its old wealth. This was the place for the Kennedys, the Rockefellers, the Roosevelts, uh, Carnegies, all these big names in American history. They all had a place up on these streets. And now I, I believe it's it's still a place where, you know, if you have the big money in New York, you're coming up here. Now there are some other very wealthy neighborhoods, Tribeca, Brooklyn Heights. Uh, but if you want to concentrate on the largest conglomerate of wealth, this is it. Guggenheim Museum, built by Frank Lloyd Wright, 1959 just way ahead of his time. It's a cylindrical building, wider at the top than at the bottom. It, it was conceived as the temple of the spirit. It's just got a beautiful flow to it. Very unique. And I love, I love this type of architecture where if it was built today, it would look contemporary. But it was 1959. Was this Andrew Carnegie's home? Yes. He lived here? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, have you ever been inside? Did you ever take a tour of it? No, is it open now or is it closed? <laughs> you know, it looks like it's closed from here. Huh? Yeah. And they haven't opened the garden. All right, guys, it's closed right now, but this is Andrew Carnegie's home. I believe it was his home or one of his properties. And Andrew Carnegie, for those that don't know, uh, massive steel tycoon. Really, a lot of his uh, businesses were behind the Industrial Revolution here in America. He gave away $350 million uh, back in his time, which is $65 billion today, adjusted for inflation. And this isn't like uh, his only residence or building. He owned a lot of real estate. Okay, what do we got up here? See, we are, we're, we're just going right along the park, Fifth Ave, take a right, Russian flag in the background, must be the Russian consulate, they picked the nice real estate obviously, there's beautiful detail here as you can see, and what has happened in that building over the years, you can see the, those classic Russian shades up there, bars on the windows, very classy looking now. I'm actually surprised there isn't that much, uh, like there's not a security tower around there or anything. Hello, hey. how are you doing? I'm doing well, you? What are you doing? I'm making a video about the Upper East Side. This was an armory. This 
this was an armory. Okay. So the Landmarks Commission said, okay, we'll let you build a school, uh -huh. but you have to keep the facade. Oh, okay. So this is the facade of the armory. So and there's, a, there's, there's a school a behind it. There. Okay. Behind there is Hunter College High School, which is a public school. This is an historic district. Okay. And it's called Carnegie Hill. And those of us who bought apartments here 30, 40 years ago. Right. You're, you're... I don't know what's going to happen to New York now. It's enough. But we're bankrupt. The, the city's bankrupt. bankrupt. The city's bankrupt. How's your feel about the city right now? Well, I think uh, we're in better shape than the mid the West and the Midwest. Than the West. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then the South. Yeah. Um, but COVID yeah. is starting to increase here as the schools have opened. Yeah, okay. And so forth. So it, I don't know. It's week by week. Enjoy my city. I love it. Bye. Always have. Always will. Take care. Bye. Okay. Guys, we have Carnegie, I think it's called Carnegie Tower. This is where Anthony Bourdain lived. It, it's not the most beautiful building from the outside, but I'm sure it's quite sweet inside. I believe his place sold for 3.2 million. So let's just see if we can get in the front door here. Carnegie Hill, this is the nicest part of the Upper East Side. Roughly $350,000 is the median family income. Carnegie Hill Tower, the door is open. Door is open. Hey guys, How are you? did you guys know Bourdain? Yeah. How was he? Was, was he cool? He was cool? Yeah. And he, he lived here for a long time, right? I do, yes. This is a very cool thing about the United States is you can be in the wealthiest neighborhood and what? There's no security out front. You can just walk in a building. But those places are very expensive. Everyone in the multi-millions, I'm sure. So my wife mentioned this to me. She, she really brought it to my attention is wealth in America is sort of shown. People are proud of it. Um, not everything's behind fences and security guards and gates. Yeah, there's plenty of that stuff, right? But there's a lot that's not, and we'll see that in this neighborhood. There's a lot that, you know, anyone can walk these streets. That's quite cool because in a lot of the world, if you have that much wealth, it's behind a gate, it's behind security. You'll never be near it, let's say. And she was saying it's inspirational here because while you might not have you know, all that money, you can, you can observe, right? And you can somewhat interact like I did with that lady back there. And I think that's unique. I never noticed this about the States. I actually learned about America through my wife more than anyone, uh, through her eyes. But that's cool. That's uh, in, this, in these days of polarization and negativity about America, it's nice to observe these things. We live abroad, been abroad for four years. So coming back into it, you see things a different way. It's the type of neighborhood you see shops like these. Uh, you don't see these in a lot of parts of the city. Flower shop, pumpkins, Halloween's coming. They've set them up these tents on the streets and at nighttime I think they get pretty busy but only 25% inside which is ridiculous uh, for the business owners it's got to be brutal to try to run a business like this you can see another one and they put a lot of money into these like that's done quite well with the flower pots flower arrangements some are lucky they already have the awnings have done outdoor dining for a long time. Very cute setup. Beautiful. I like that shot right there. So this one right here, I was just talking to this lady in the uh, pushing the baby carriage. 
she said that would be more than five million. So that, I guess much more than five million. She just moved to the neighborhood, loves it. Very safe, excellent schools. You can see the schools here. But again, this is very cool. This is like, once this goes away in America, then America loses a lot of what's great about it. So you have some, probably some of the wealthier moms in the country open outside of their, their school with their kids. There are no security guards around. There are no gates. Even the fire hydrant is stylish and expensive looking. So a lot of these places have doormen outside. I think that's sort of that old money feel. You know, the very classy doormen dressed up well. The very much decorated hallways, doorways. No bars on the windows. I mean, that's nice. You guys make it look beautiful. Thank you. Take care. Where's where's the nicest street here? Do you think? Nicest street. Yeah, in uh, Carnegie Hill area. It's all over in all honesty. <laughs> this is a very nice area, man. <laughs> gotcha. Take care. Right, here we have a synagogue. So in the Upper East Side, there are 220,000 people. I gotta fact check myself, but I believe there are like 55,000. Jews who live here. So, huge Jewish population. And the Asian population is increasing. Very nice markets in this part of the city. Fresh cut fruit, fresh vegetables. Nice selection. Hello. Nice market you have. It's what it is, every street. Nice, tree-lined, quiet, not much action. Like it's the, uh, the antithesis of the South Bronx. South Bronx? Nah, I don't want to live there. But that place is alive, for sure. Even the trash looks cleaner in these parts. Oh, that's recycling. But, uh, well, there's some trash. The trash looks clean in the Upper East Side. Here on the east side of the Upper East Side, looking out across the East River at Queens, back down uh, Lower Manhattan, and nice little park area. This is Roosevelt Island. There are many islands in the city. Some are in uninhabited, some are inhabited. The Upper East Side is is quite big, and just to give you a scale of the city. Uh, you know, it's just a small part of Manhattan, which is quite large. You have Brooklyn, which is massive. Queens, massive. Uh, the Bronx. Uh, Staten Island, I've never been there. But it's just, you, you honestly could spend years discovering this city. This might be the capital of the mini dog, the Upper East Side. We have what looks to be a mini dog park. <laughs> I'm about to enter the mini dog world. My wife wants to get a papillon. I asked for the, the smartest and the least yappy mini dog. And I guess it's the papillon. I, I really hope it is. And here we got some of that New York, you know, skate culture, basketball culture. Everyone's sort of mixed up doing their thing. Gotta love this. This is a Sukkot. I believe that's that's uh, Sukkah, right? Correct. Very Jewish. No, but I know about your culture. Okay. It's very cool. I really respect it. I respect I the whole. Take a video in there too, or whatever. Can I? Yeah, sure. Can we go in? Oh, cool. And so the main purpose to being here is to relieve yourself from ex the external world. Um, you sleep out here, you pray in here. That's not really the purpose. God protected the Jewish people with clouds, and this is to commemorate those clouds that surrounded the people. Clouds uh, protected them from the wild animals in the desert and protected them from the heat. 
commemorate the crowds, we have a physical structure. The number on the right, the 430 is the government. Yes. 550 is for the taxi. <laughs> Thank you. That's how much New York City is now taxing people to ride around in a cab. Unbelievable. Almost the same amount uh, tax as the fare. Oh, it's well. Mom, um, I said, let's just be clear. <laughs> it's like, it's, an, it's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, look who I found. It's my wife, and you look so pleasant. <laughs> Upper East Side, Midtown Manhattan, sun setting, Central Park. That about wraps it up, guys. Upper East Side, most expensive neighborhood in New York City. Until the next one, take care.